Physics Biz, a science podcast in English by the grade 11 students of Notre Dame de Sion. All right, so we're back with another episode of Physics Bits, where we have uh, two of our grade 11 students talk very briefly about their presentations and in grade 11 where their presentations are about famous scientists uh, in the past few centuries. Uh, we have two new students here and I also have a new co-host, uh, so Marine, which you might know because she already did a presentation uh, in our grade 12 class. Hello Marine. Hello. What was your presentation about? Can you remind us? Uh, special relativity. Right, it was a very tough topic with Noemi and they did a really good job of it uh, and so she's out here today uh, as a co-host. Uh, interviewing our two students. So, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Um, I'm Antoine. So, we have Antoine and, and Jean-Paul. Jean-Paul, who are two students in grade 11. Both of you guys are doing physics this year, right? Yes. yes. Right. Uh, so, electromagnetism isn't necessarily something very new. So, why don't we start with a short little uh, presentation of what you guys talked about, and then we'll go on to the questions, and uh, Marie will help me in that part. Um, I'm going to start with uh, James Maxwell Life because it's important. So uh, he's one of the most famous uh, scientists of all time. He was born on the 13th of June, uh, 1831 in Edinburgh. And at 10 years old, he went to the Edinburgh Academy where he was very talented in math and uh, science. At uh, 16 years old, he then went to the Edinburgh University where he then studied math, but also logic, metaphysics, and also natural philosophy, which we now call science. Mm -hmm. At uh, 19 years old, he went to the Cambridge University. Uh, he graduated in math in 1854, and he became a natural philosophy professor at the Marischal College in Aberdeen in Scotland. He then married, uh, in 1858, Catherine married the war, but they didn't have any children. Uh, in 1860, he got fired but he obtained a post at the King's College in London, where he became the first professor of experimental physics. Uh, no, actually, he became the professor at the Cambridge University, sorry. And uh, at 48 years old, so uh, very young, he died of a stomach cancer. Well, so in a very brief life, but he did manage to accomplish many things. Like you said, he's considered as one of the greatest scientists of the past two or three centuries, or modern science we can call it. Uh, so Antoine, do you want to tell us briefly uh, some of his most uh, well-known accomplishments? Uh, yes, so I think uh, the most famous one uh, are the four uh, Maxwell's equations. Which, right, uh, so the, the Maxwell equations in which field? Uh, electromagnetism. Right, so we can actually say that maybe that he is the father of electromagnetism because of uh, what he did in this. So do you want to talk to us very briefly about this? Um, so basically the four equations are something that states um, the field of electricity uh, on how important it is uh, according to the um, intensity of the electricity that goes in a certain... Right, so we're talking about the electric space. field on the one part. Yes. And two of the four equations sort uh, of talk about the electric field. Yes, and about how it's uh, defined. Mm -hmm. And the two other ones um, states... Um, the first one is about how the electric field is related to the magnetic field. Right. So that basically if you have um, a modification in an electric field or in a uh, magnetic field, you create the other one. Right, so this was the important part of this is that it shows that electricity and magnetism, which we considered as two different phenomena, are actually kind of different facets of the same thing. So uh, this was quite, in a way we can call the first uh, unified theory in physics that we had a hundred and some odd years before what we're doing now, okay? And uh, the last one is basically something that states that a magnetic field has to get a north pole and a south pole mm -hmm. right, for it to simply exist. Right. Which is different from the electric field in that the electric field can have just a positive charge alone yes. and a negative charge alone, but we can never find a north pole or a south pole just alone in magnetism, right? It's, exactly. a, it's a subject of debate and discussion. Uh, what else did he do besides electromagnetism? Well, that's a good part of his life, but what else did he do that is... What other fields of physics did he touch on? Uh, he also uh, studied a lot of uh, optics, in the field yeah. of optics. So uh, he's well Which is not too far from electromagnetism because uh, light is basically an aspect of the electromagnetic field. Yeah. Uh, and so he was the first one to make a, a photograph in color, so which is a, quite an accomplishment in life. A long time ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think he also worked uh, on uh, 
some stuff uh, about uh, thermodynamics. Yeah. So we have we actually have a question about that from uh, uh, one of your classmates, which we might get to uh, in the th field of thermodynamics. So Marine, uh, I know you haven't done physics since last year, but uh, do you remember anything from electromagnetism from when you worked on it before? You did some physics last year, no. right? Uh, no, no, since uh, uh, have you had you heard of uh, Maxwell before? Um, yes, but I didn't know the his theory. Okay, if you guys have anything more to add. Or shall we go on to the questions? I think we can go on the questions. All right, let's go on to the questions. Uh, Marine, do you want to maybe uh, start with a question that you have, or maybe one of the questions that the classmates sent? Maybe we can start with uh, the questions of the classmates. Okay, sure, go ahead. Um, so, what did he uh, do in astrophysics? Um, in astrophysics, he was the first one to prove that the rings of Saturn mm -hmm. are actually uh, thousands of little objects. And not a fluid, and to did that he built a little wheel uh, in wood, on which he he sticked uh, tiny uh, little balls of uh, polystyrene. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and uh, when he spun the wheel, uh, the the balls uh, looked like a, a ring. Okay. So, so he basically sort of showed uh, by analogy in an experiment that things that can be discrete may look like they're fluids. Uh, did he discover the rings of Saturn? Uh, I don't think he's the first yeah. one to... Who, who, who was the one who discovered the rings of Saturn? Do you guys remember? I uh, know. Ah, a bit of history of science. Does anybody remember? Who discovered the rings of Saturn? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, Marc Alessandre. Oh, I would say Galileo. Yep, that's Galileo. Good job. He was, uh, he was the first one who sort of observed them when he uh, improved the first... Uh, uh, telescopes back in the 16th century and 15th century. All right, all right. So that was what he did in astrophysics, though he's not so well known for it necessarily. What about Maxwell's demon? So it's got this very whimsical name. Uh, what, do we, what is the story of Maxwell's demon? Does it, uh, Antoine, do you want to maybe talk uh, to us yeah. about it? So uh, as I said, he worked a lot uh, on uh, thermodynamics. And uh, something that uh, states the second law of thermodynamics is that um, the low states that uh, heat does not naturally flow from a cool body to a warmer body. And so, so that's one of the consequences of the second law of yes. thermodynamics, which more specifically talks about this weird idea called entropy, which we don't really see yet. Uh, but one of the consequences is that uh, heat doesn't go from cold to warm, it goes from warm to cold always, right? Okay. And so he made a thought experiment, mm -hmm. which uh, is quite hard, but we tried to explain it uh, quite easily, yeah. which uh, he took two vessels differently and he puts uh, different gases uh, molecules in both of them and with a small hole uh, between the two of them. And so uh, his demon was that a certain entity mm -hmm. uh, could be capable of managing the flow of molecules that could uh, go from one vessel to the other. Mm -hmm. And that the kinetic energy of the molecules that would go through this hole mm -hmm. uh, would create a um, certain amount of energy so that uh, this machine could like work forever and be technically like unstoppable. Right, what we call create. a perpetual motion machine, yes. which is uh, something that is not really possible because in reality we have very, uh, it's very difficult to, or let's say impossible to actually not have no energy losses. Yeah? Yes, and it was uh, Léon Brillouin, which was a okay. French physicist in uh, 1950 that proved that uh, his demon was basically impossible. Right, right. So it was a thought experiment and he's like, well, let's imagine if this could be possible, what would be the consequences, something that theoretical physicists do very often. Uh, Marine, uh, did you find another question that you thought could be interesting? Yeah, um, so the one uh, that is asking, uh, so what is exactly Maxwell-Boltzmann uh, distribution? Right, the famous Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So Boltzmann was another famous uh, physicist of the 19th century, which nobody I think did a presentation on, but did you guys come across uh, what this Maxwell Boltzmann yeah. distribution is? What is it? Uh, so uh, about? he did it with uh, Boltzmann. Uh, the Maxwell Boltzmann equation is basically a function uh, which forms the basis of the kinetic uh, theory of gases. Of gases, yeah. Of gases. So it defines the distribution of the speeds of a gas at a certain temperature. And uh, from this distribution, uh, we can then uh, get the most probable speed of these uh, particles, also their average average speed, and the uh, and by extension their average kinetic energy, yeah. and uh, their root mean square speed can uh, also be derived. 
So. Right. So this Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is kind of stuff we touched on in grade 10 when we talked about thermal agitation. Remember, we talked about how, well, okay, what is the, what is the temperature something's talking about, sort of the average speed of how fast the particles are moving. And so what they, this idea of distribution is to show that, okay, if the average is something, just like maybe in a class, the class average could be like maybe 12 or 13 out of 20. It doesn't mean that everybody is exactly at that mark. It could be some are around this and then very few are the extremes and most like are bunched around this, this sort of thing. And they sort of talked about this in terms of the speed of particles that make up a gas. Is that it? Um, so maybe a question. How did you guys find the topic? How did you find, did you find, did you know anything about Maxwell before you did your research? Was it a discovery for both of you? Uh, uh, I personally knew Maxwell because uh, he's really You personally knew him? No, no, but like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're older than you look. <laughs> I as a person uh, knew about him because, uh, first of all, he's very well known for uh, his four uh, equations. Right. And uh, also because uh, my grandfather is a huge fan of physics. And uh, <laughs> he uh, gave me a book which is by... Uh, Nobel Prize, which talks about physics and uh, especially about light. Right. And uh, because Maxwell uh, did a lot on uh, electromagnetism and that yep. light is uh, closely related to it, uh, there's lots about Maxwell in this book. Obviously. No, his, his, the Maxwell equations are uh, revered by most physicists because they're a very elegant and compact way of talking about something that's very vast and uh, very, very important. Uh, and yeah, also, I mean, do you know um, the inspirations that are the Maxwell, like uh, of uh, other physicists? That he right. Did he did he sort of model himself on anybody else, or like what was his? Uh, how was how did he get into maybe physics and besides his natural talents, I guess for it. Uh, did you guys find anything in your researches? Uh, in his inspiration, no, but uh, he inspired himself. Inspired? Inspired, yeah. Uh, a lot of different <laughs> physicists afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, Einstein said yep. about him that he was like quite a bright, a bright person and that his work basically changed physics. Right. And if we actually look at how Einstein came up with his idea of special relativity, uh, his motivation first came from a sort of anomaly that he had found in the equations of Maxwell, which was like a lack of symmetry between the way uh, the movement of objects, uh, the magnetic and electromagnetic electric fields were sort of creating one another, and he wanted to take, get away with this. He wanted to get rid of this uh, lack of symmetry, and that's he sort of came up with the idea of relativity. All right. Uh, did you find the topic difficult? I know that the, Antoine, you tried to give us an explanation that was a couple of years ahead of uh, the level of the students in terms of what the equations represent. You're talking about gradients and you know uh, differential equations, which none of you guys have really seen yet. Uh, did you find it difficult? Uh, the yes. research? Yeah, it was difficult. Um, the equations, uh, personally, uh, for a, a week or so before uh, every day. I search online uh, videos and uh, articles about the equation to try to understand wrap your head it. around it. Yeah, yeah. not very easy. No, I know you guys have done just a little bit of differentials and like you know calculation of derivatives and stuff this year, but you haven't done anything more than that. So, all right, uh, Marine, do you have any more questions, or oh, no. shall we thank our two guests? So thank you Jean-Paul and Antoine, it was a really good presentation and I think Antoine we're going to see you a bit later when you have the presentation also on, I don't remember. Max Planck. Oh, Max Planck, that's right. Alright, thank you very much and we'll see you guys next time.